and what is required. The, the allowance here will, um, will give leeway for uh, those who want to produce and or transfer, sell, distribute to, uh, for medicinal purposes the ability to apply for a license for the state and there will be a process to, um, to vet and then uh, issue licenses. But really the whole premise of this bill is, uh, is designed for those who um, are seeking relief from medical conditions such as, and I've got a, a list here that it's, it's, that it's actually clarifying here, and uh, let's see, here it is. They call it debilitating medical conditions. This is one of the, um, the uh, definitions here. Cancer, glaucoma, HIV, ALS, Crohn's disease, Parkinson's, Parkinson's disease, ulcerative colitis, Alzheimer's, epilepsy, multiple sclerosis, post-traumatic stress, uh, uh, stress disorder, PTSD. And that's the limitation for the ability to receive uh, treatment uh, from a physician um, with um, the medicinal cannabis or marijuana. As I was reading through this, I, I know of some particular circumstances of folks who have transferred from Missouri to other states, Colorado particularly, for, uh, for different ailments. One young lady came to my office last year, <coughs> she had been wheelchair bound for a good part of her life. She was still young in her 20s. And for some time she had been taking, I think she said about 12 or so different prescription medications. Her ailment was that her, her joints were so lax the connective tissue did not allow enough support for her to stand for long periods of time, and so she couldn't hold a job, or at least one that was in a standing position. And so the, um, the ill effects that she was realizing from, from all the medications were draining on her system as well. So she moved to Colorado, and she took <laughs> the, uh, the cannabis or the THC in a, uh, a capsule form, which now is legal in Missouri, the CBD oil. And she said within two weeks, she was able to relieve herself from all the other medications. And uh, she was able to withstand uh, the pain enough where she could stand for longer periods of time and she was able to work. There, there are other conditions that uh, some of the children that have come to the Capitol, um, they, some of the girls that uh, cause extreme pain and otherwise, um, whether or not those folks have sought treatment outside the state, I'm not familiar. I'm advocating for the, um, uh, the ability to use cannabis or THC here in the state. I'm familiar just recently with a man who goes to my church who has um, uh, migraines. And on a scale of, of uh, 1 to 10, his were reaching the 10 level. And um, his physicians were at a loss as to what to provide for him for treatment. Um, he contacted my pastor, and my pastor contacted me and asked me uh, about this particular bill. And I told him what I could. And meanwhile, this man, man traveled to Colorado and received a patch that had THC in it. And he said, if, my memory may not be exactly, but I believe it was, it, it was within about 20 minutes, this pain level went down to zero. Mm -hmm. And so now he's considering moving away so that he can receive treatment uh, such as this. When, when I was asked a question some time ago about legalization of marijuana, um, of course I was a little hesitant because we don't know all the ramifications for Washington or Colorado, and maybe there are others who are considering some of the same things. So, so in my opinion, the jury's still out there, but it's, I don't think all the questions have been, have been answered by those in, uh, in Colorado, especially the ones that I've been looking at, uh, with regard to the crime rates, production, and all those sorts of things. When you consider, though, the uh, medicinal um, 
quality of marijuana and the, the potential benefits, if the controls that are proposed can be put into place, I, I think it, in my opinion, it warrants consideration. Some of the things though that, uh, one of the things I thought was kind of funny, I look back here, here it was. Look, um, page you got. I'm on page 44, okay. line 190. <laughs> Page one, uh, 44, 190. For those who, who, uh, who didn't get one of these, it, it was such a large document. I was going to print one out for, for everyone, but I didn't have any people. 47 pages yeah. might have been a little bit uh, a bit much. But oh, we're built. Yes. Yeah, and, and the majority of it, as I mentioned, the, the existing statute was 195, and it, it was dealing with controlled substances. And so with the addition of medicinal uh, cannabis, it added uh, the all the way up to 47, so it's that, that was the, the primary part of the bill for the, the additions. But um, under section nine um, in subsection A, read a little bit here. It says the, the use of medical cannabis is allowed under state law to the extent that it's carried out in accordance with sections 195, etc., and the rules of the department. A patient or primary caregiver shall not, and I'm going to skip down to this part here, uh, engage in the use of medicinal cannabis while in a correctional facility. And I laughed when I read that because when I consider the war on drugs, <coughs> they haven't made an impact here. I mean, they, they can't control drugs even inside the prison walls. And so <laughs> to, to say that this is going to be one of the, um, uh, the exceptions, is really laughable yeah. in a sense. I, I think the intent probably is, is correct, and I and I agree with it, but I don't know if they can actually do that. Um, the the one the one addition though, when I mentioned the, the migraines, that if this is to take effect, I don't know that the limits should be as stated here. I believe it should it should include migraines, but. When you go to a physician, uh, a physician, if you look at it, it's a practice. And I've, I've had, um, for example, kidney stones for, since I was 18, so the last uh, 38 years or so. And um, each urologist I go to will suggest a different method to, uh, to deal with it. And they, some, some better than others, perhaps, but it, but it is a practice. And so what I'm, what I'm suggesting this is that if this is to take effect, that since the physician is the one we're giving the ultimate um, authority and decisions for caregiving, allow them to determine what the needs are, and if this would warrant uh, as a, uh, a method of treatment to allow them the leeway to do that. Uh, I, I probably could talk a little bit more, but what I'd rather do is, is ask you for questions. If, if you have something that I might be able to address that's in the bill or even something outside that I can, I'll, I'll try. Yes. And the last thing that you just mentioned about uh, the physicians having authority, I do agree with that, but it, shouldn't that be only on the corporate sales instead of general public? Uh, it, I have an issue with Explain corporate sales in general. Okay, uh, we as a people should not be controlled by a plant being controlled by legalization and concern. Once you put it into the authority of corporate control and medical things like that, what about the people like me, who's not on that list, who may be able to benefit, and the children that also that don't, can't afford to go to the doctor? but know how and know that it is a safe thing looking it up nobody dies from this it's not toxic mm -hmm. so why is it being controlled is my question to begin with mm -hmm. well some of my thoughts and, and this may not be um, a, a parallel argument I, I, I don't know but my first thoughts when we were talking about this and the potential um, recreational use goes back to the 20s when prohibition was was enforced mm -hmm. and um, as I was thinking through that uh, in today's war on drugs there's not been a success there and um, I, I don't know if I know what the answers are but I'm, 
looking at with the confines of the capital, especially, uh, there are rules there that are are followed that aren't followed outside these capital walls. For example, even just the rule of smoking. Uh, you can smoke in the capital, but yet uh, in other areas within municipalities and cities, you can't because of certain prohibitions. Uh, alcohol is one that primarily came to mind with regard to the prohibition, and um, that um, I guess you could say that alcohol flows pretty freely in the capital. Mm -hmm. And so, if you were to, if you were to say, and, and I'm just using this argument for the sake of conversation here, so chime in mm -hmm. if you agree, disagree, or whatever. If you if you use alcohol as one extreme, and then marijuana or any other drug, legal or illegal, on the other, uh, within the capital, you would have some vehement arguments against touching the alcohol because legislators uh, many drink, smoke while working, but yet. Um, they would not consider putting oh, on or something. Yeah, they, well, they, they, maybe not that. They probably wouldn't care. Uh, but if, if we're trying to make a comparison with marijuana or oxycontin or hydrocodone or Rorset or any other type of controlled substances, and this is not controlled right now, it's just illegal, uh, they would argue that it's not on the same field. Mm -hmm. That may or may not be true, but that's the probably the best example that I've come up with so far that um, that I can use to at least argue in a, in a productive way. Um, I don't know the answers what, what's going to happen with what you just said, but one of the other things that I've looked at too is that um, I wanted to bring in some plants. I stopped at some nurseries yesterday, but they've not been growing yet. Um, how many of you have grown the, the plant Fox Club? The digitalis fox club is the one that you actually extract digitalis from, and that's a heart medication. And if used improperly, it can kill it. Uh, and, there's, and there's purple cone flower that you can get echinacea from, and people use that also. So, so those are just a couple of examples of, of uh, plants that we have that, if used properly, can be beneficial. Um, to, in today's day, we're, we're probably moving a little bit more toward the center, I guess, but uh, marijuana would be one of those that would be argued uh, against the personal growing and manufacturing use for, for various reasons. Well, I think money probably is part of it. And with this one, the uh, when you speak about the money, I believe the uh, two licenses each run twelve and a half thousand dollars. So to grow. To, to grow or to transfer, sell to medicinal facilities. Uh, Eleven foot tall fences. Right. There, there's a and lot. Eleven of, foot tall fences to grow off any home field. Yeah. And, yeah. I, I didn't. I didn't actually read the, the fence part. It may be in there. But it, it's for health. For uh -huh. transfers to cannabis and yeah. also yeah. medicinal. The problem is with medicinal, you need extra security forces other than just. Well, well that, that is in here about how the building needs to be secured and, and all that sort of right. thing. And, uh, and I think they're going to be grown primarily in greenhouses. I, I don't know that for sure. It's mostly for pollen and. Uh, be the most controlled sure. environment. Yeah. Yeah. So um, there will be a lot of conversation with regard to that, yes. Well, I just wanted yes. to know, um, how will that affect the cities? I mean, will they be required that they accept at least one, like liquor stores? You know how they have to have two no. liquor no. stores? The, this leaves the, uh, the local communities to determine whether or not they want this to be produced in their... Like a dispensary. So, yeah. so a city yeah. can prevent a dispensary. Uh, it would be up, up to the local community to decide whether they wanted it or not. And uh, there, there are limitations, and I don't remember exactly what those are um, at this point about how close those facilities can be. So you couldn't have a St. Louis having all of them in the same, in the same area. Well, what I read, I think, is they're, they're going to allow 30, okay. 30 four dispensaries, I believe, and it'll be distributed according to demographics and, and, and population areas. And then if the demand is greater than the 
facilities, as far as the amount of facilities that they can issue more licenses, like two or three more. Or so. But my, my concern about the bill, I mean, I'm very, very happy, don't get me wrong, I'm very, very happy sure. with the bill. Um, but I would, some people would like to be able to grow the room, mm -hmm. especially people in rural areas or can't afford are, aren't very, can't afford it or aren't mobile or something. But I, I understand why. <laughs> I understand why you know they're doing it as far as that, but personally, I would like to see the ability for a person to be able to grow with a with a you know card or whatever you know, position. Well, actually, Ben's dad is probably on the extreme opposite side of those who are. Well, it's in the corner of those who are opposing this because their their concern is the recreational, and that's yeah. where you would, you wouldn't be able to control it. Yeah, and so. Uh, I haven't convinced, but just a few perhaps, who are against the recreational that this might be a good idea for medicinal purposes. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think if that argument is, uh, is added to this, yeah. this will this will die. Yeah, that's, that's the reason why I'm saying I, I would prefer at least something versus uh, nothing. You yeah. know what I mean? It, it will still, it's... It still won't touch the recreational though. Yeah. And as far as what you're saying, growing your own and using it, even if you know the proper uh, procedures to do that for beneficial use, uh, yeah. this one, this does not fit in yeah. this container. Yeah. Yeah. And yes, sir. Um, I know a lot of people like I. I have epilepsy, and I have to take like six different medications, mm -hmm. and it affects my appetite. So I think that should be on the bill also. Like the epilepsy appetite, is included. Mm -hmm. Like appetite or appetite loss. Uh -huh. Because I know a lot of people that have, <coughs> they have to take several different medications and they probably have issues with appetite. I don't know how open they're going to be for amendments, but I think giving physician oversight is one that just makes sense because. Uh, mm -hmm. That's not in there. Yes. Yeah. So try to add that in there? I would. I would uh, I've already suggested that that be, but um, we'll see how open they are to allowing it. Oh, I, I have a question for you. What do you feel about the bill to uh, release Jeff Mazansky, uh, the fellow serving life in prison without parole for marijuana? I think it's Bill 983, and it, yeah. they amended it to say that he could go before the parole board mm -hmm. to, to seek release versus uh, the state. Same yeah, I I have I don't have any information on what all the particulars were on his arrest, but um, it, I'd have to know more about that. But if it's just because of possession, it, was that all it was? Well, he was, was, he was sentenced to life to prison without parole, but for three for uh, three pounds of he was given life without parole, and so the bill that was. Uh, Submitted by Representative Duggar, I believe, Duggar. Duggar. Uh -huh. um, you know, it's already gone through the, the uh, Judiciary Committee, and it's already gone through the, uh, the criminal, <laughs> what, what was it? the one that oversights the prison, what was it? Yeah. Corrections. Corrections. Uh -huh. And they, they both went, they both passed the committee mm -hmm. with recommendation to pass. Okay. Well, if, if it were simply the cost of possession, Life seems excessive. Um, I don't know what the other extenuating circumstances were, but uh, there are, as I understand, probably the majority of our, at least not the majority, but a good number of our inmates uh, are confined, incarcerated because of marijuana possession and usage. And um, that's expensive. Yeah. And, well, life sentence is kind of inappropriate, I yeah. think. Well, it was, it was because when he was sentenced, it was his third strike. Uh, and that's the reason why he got life gotcha. in that world, but that was 22 yeah. years ago. Well, I'll reserve the yeah. judgment until I actually get to read it here. But if it's just for that, it's uh, probably a little bit too much. Now, um, how, how are they going to regulate? medical marijuana as far as 
Are the growth facilities going to be open to inspection by the Bureau of Alcohol and Tobacco? I mean, there's going to be some, yeah. some standards. Is there going to be testing of the marijuana and yeah. so forth? In the building, they do um, lay out the testing and how many tests have to, to meet the specs before their uh, licenses and validated and be like they have to be um, what is it? Recalibrated, that's not the right word, but something like yeah. that. Uh, we, you know, standards have to be reestablished to that effect. And will there be like a paper trail as far as from the growth process to the person receiving the marijuana as far as it maybe having a barcode or something like the, that? The labels are pretty labels. particular too, and there are certain requirements on the labels. And I would imagine if they're following other medicinal packaging, there would be some sort of paper trail. Uh, one concern is, and I'm not sure if this is a valid concern or not, but there's only one inspector per 10 facility. Really? And whether that's too few, it, it sounds kind of like it might be, especially in the initial phase. Yeah. Um, you know, that, that just kind of raises a little bit of concern for me. Uh, uh, is there any way to turn it more or less into like a vitamin or an extract instead of a medicinal pill? Um, sorry, instead of turning it into a drug company's profit, is there any way of turning it into a vitamin or an extract type formula that could still be controlled for sale purposes, but not corporate controlled for us? That's a good question. Anything's possible, but I, I don't know. Well, that would pretty much do very similar to that, and except that you, uh, within this, I believe it's turning it into the drug company's formula. If it were, my wording could be a little different, then it could be turned into the same as a vitamin or a mineral extract, yeah. a vitamin extract. It's if it does pass, like, are they going to regulate how they grow, like, the uh, marijuana? Like, are yeah. they going to force them to grow organically, yeah. regulate the pesticides that they use? Yes, yeah, so if, if, according to the information I understand here, it will be pesticide free. And it has to be tested for uh, uh, metals and uh, pollens and all sorts of things. So there's pretty strict standards. He has a friend in California that just opened the uh, dispensary. <laughs> And so anybody then who is caught with the marijuana, who doesn't have a medicine, a medicine card, they're just going to be treated like any other as far as being busted. Criminal. Yeah, the, they're criminal. criminal. And the violations are, are in this particular bill, because it was part of the statute before in Chapter 195, I believe it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 195. And it has to do with 35 or more or less the uh, either a felony or a misdemeanor. And so those still stand. Wow, I thought they were going to be criminal or like, well, I guess it would be criminal or like, not, not in this bill. Yeah, there's other things out there. There are two, and I don't know if you're aware of it, there are two petitions going around because it's a constitutional amendment, and by two different groups are, there are two different measures, but it would bypass the legislature and have a right to the voters. And if we get enough signatures, it will be on the presidential ballot in November. So it's an initiative petition or something? Yeah, there's two yeah. separate ones. One is full legalization across the board because it's a non-toxic plant. And we don't want the pharmacies to profit from it. That's the full legalization one. That's the one I have here, um, if anybody wants to sign it. There's another petition that has age restrictions and quantity uh, restrictions. You can only have grow six plants. You have to be 21 or older to possess it. Um, just because it is taxation, 25% like taxation. And both of them also expunge any criminal record related to nonviolent connections with that. So that's happening as well. So I were you aware of that? I haven't read that, no. Well, yeah. Yeah. No, is that is that on the Secretary of State's uh -huh. website already? It's it's past it, yeah. yeah. It's I think it's, circulated, so uh, I think it's yeah, both of them are circulated right now. I think one's double oh seven and I think one's double one zero one three. Zero one three is the full zero zero eight. Zero zero nine. Okay. Zero zero nine. I have no pleasure. I can't send you. Okay. Thank you. Mike, yes, so as the bill stands now, you support it? That's part of what I wanted to get you together here today for, to see 
what the, the, the support was, what the opposition was, if there were other concerns that haven't been realized yet. But, but here's where, before the meeting, here's where I stood. Because of the controls established and because of the success that I've seen from firsthand from those that I, that I know and uh, those who have presented themselves at the Capitol, it's apparent that there is some medicinal benefit to uh, the THC. And, um, yes, uh -huh. yes. And uh, last year there was a measure that was passed to. Uh, to approve the 0.3% uh, THC in the oil, and um, I, I don't know how far they've gotten in that, but due to that, as long as it's used properly and proper oversight is given, given I think that um, this is probably a pretty good measure. I think there needs to be some changes, the one particularly with position oversight, but uh, otherwise, uh, in this present form with some amendments, uh, I would be able to support that. But I still want to hear from you. Mm -hmm. um, because are you, are you going to have other meetings? Like maybe Maryville or Aurora? Or I, I plan to, but the, this thing that is it's going yeah, pretty quick. It's pretty time sensitive, yes. Hmm. And uh, it, it sort of moved through. Uh, at a faster pace than I had realized, but I, I did want to have at least uh, as many as we could get the new people. Well, I, I see that Representative Eric Erickson, uh, Eric Burleson, Bur Burleson has a uh, he did like, he has like a whole uh, you know for people to give you know, their opinions. So I was wondering if other representatives around the state are being as proactive as you as far as getting input from folks. And everything. I, I honestly don't know. Look at it, 
is we've lost tax revenue. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and that's something that, um, that we don't want necessarily. I don't want to raise taxes, but at the same time, we don't want to, to make decisions that uh, seem to be prudent, that would, um, or that a prudent decision we, we decide not to do it, that would drive people out of our state, whether it be a business, an individual, or otherwise. And so, again, in its present form, the way that the, um, uh, the security provisions and the um, production and the processing have been stated here. If that's done and the oversight is proper, as it's been stated, then it, I think it could be a good thing. Now, as far as the money part of it, I think some people, you know, I, I shouldn't say this probably, but there, there may be some more than that as a revenue generator. I know it will be. It certainly will be because there are obviously people who have benefited in some form or another from treatments like this. And it may be well. That's where in reality it is a non-toxic plant. It, it's a carrot is more toxic because yeah. you can overdose on vitamin A. You yeah. cannot die yeah. from it. <laughs> here's, Seriously. Here's, here's the argument that I hear, and honestly, as a kid growing up, you know, I was born in the late fifties and grew up in the sixties and the seventies, and in my high school it was pretty prevalent. Kids would go out and even in the the catacombs of the building they would smoke. Uh, marijuana, and um, uh, since I never did, I've never really experienced what they experienced and the euphoria that they talked about. But that's the, the mindset that I have, or in have. Uh, this changes it a little bit, but here, here's some of the argument. And whether it's perfect or not, I can't tell you. And I, I know it's not perfect, but I talked about the prohibition and their the, the government's intent to regulate alcohol, and it was unsuccessful. So uh, we had the amendment. Not, you yes, you can. So we had so we had the prohibition lifted, and um, many people uh, like to drink for one reason or the other, and it's legal. And some people enjoy it so much that they get drunk, they might get in the car, or another one, or do something <coughs> else that they shouldn't be doing while they're under the influence of alcohol. And they not only hurt themselves, but they damage someone else's property. When they damage someone else's property, that's where their personal freedom ends. When you're impacting adversely someone else, that, that's where it's illegal. And there should be some uh, repercussions uh, from that point. Now, can that be done with marijuana? Yeah, it can be. Some people uh, get high on marijuana and they drive and they have accidents, and they cause property damage not to themselves, only to themselves, but to others. And so that's a parallel that I think we have to, to really weigh. And especially, when, not with this probably, but that could happen if someone were to take this, but they can also do it with hydrocodone, or more set, or you know, other mm -hmm. controlled substances. That's again where we have to, each individual has to exercise personal responsibility and to know what the limits are. And here's, I don't know if you were following the prescription drug management plan, mm -hmm. but I haven't, I haven't got up and stated this yet publicly, but I think there's a bill that's gonna come back and I, I may just have to, just to say, because this is a Republican um, sponsored bill, which I think is an overreach into our, our personal lives and our, uh, our individual um, private information. I talked to you about the, uh, the kidney stones. Well, when I was uh, just out of high school, I was working for the Department of Defense, and uh, one morning I got up to go to work, and I just didn't feel very well. So uh, I, I pushed on and went to work before noon, and I was in the, the infirmary. And I presented myself at the nurse's station, and she said, well, have a seat. And this place was packed with people. And so I just stood up against the wall for a few minutes, and finally I became nauseous. So I went back to her and told her I needed a place to uh, to relieve myself, and that was my ticket to the front of the line. And so she took me in, and they, they gave me uh, uh, something to relieve my nausea. By the nightfall, though, I was less than attendance. And two weeks later, I passed my first kidney stone. And so it was a misdiagnosis, but the symptoms are pretty close, where, you know, it's an understandable mistake. Well, sometime between now and then, they started prescribing hydrocodone. 
And I, I remember one of the first times I took it, wow, this is one of the greatest feelings I've ever had. <laughs> yeah, I thought, I need to stay in this, this condition. But then I started realizing, you know, if I do this, I probably won't be able to work. <laughs> and so I'll lose my job, could lose my house, and maybe even lose my family as a result. And those consequences were just too great. Now, even in that state of mind, I was able to make a decision that, yeah, okay, once this wears off, okay, that's, that's probably enough for a while. And, and I think each of us have the same ability to make those decisions. And if we choose not to, there are consequences that we have to pay. And um, same with this. Whether it's legalized for recreational use or medicinal use or whatever, and there are other things that we can put under that umbrella, like the alcohol. Um, there are advantages and disadvantages to each of those, and we just have to make decisions that are appropriate. And uh, if not, then we, we pay the price. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Speaking of the decisions that are appropriate, when people get up in the morning and they're really tired and they drive on the road, there isn't that much difference between that and being intoxicated. So why are we being punished for supposedly being intoxicated, for the same accidents that would happen normally, but it's, we're being told that it's because of other reasons? Well, there's a lot of people that aren't smart enough to drive, they're on the road. They're too old to drive, they're blind, they can't hear, they're causing accidents, they're not getting tickets. But the people that are being blamed, maybe they shouldn't be blamed so hard is what they are, is my point. Maybe we need to take a closer look at where this damage is coming from. Is it personal responsibility now, or is it government responsibility? Where are we putting our responsibilities to? We don't have a chance to be responsible for our own well-being because the government won't allow us to do it. So this is where we're having a few issues with the situation at hand, like a bill like this that allows for punishment of the user itself compared to the sales agent that is greedy and a profiteer. Why aren't we punishing the profiteers that are causing these problems instead? There, there could be a lot of arguments for that. <laughs> right, just the point. Yeah, I, I, I think I understand what you're saying, but um, that could be another another discussion sometime. Well, I, I'm, I'm sure there's individuals in other states who are waiting in the wings for you know, marijuana to legal, I mean, medicine, marijuana to be legal in order to come in and uh, open up dispensaries and so forth. So, yeah. Now, one of the provisions of this particular bill is that it has to be produced and uh, processed within the state. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't remember seeing anything that said that an out-of-state individual couldn't set up shop here. I, I don't think there are limitations there. But otherwise, it has to be an in-state production. Any, any other comments or concerns? No, I want to I wanna know when I can have a meeting with you to talk to you about some of this other issues. Okay. Today's not the day. Today's not the day for you? No, but no. I've had you make an appointment with you that I couldn't wait yet. So. Oh, really? Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. I mean, you came to my house and talked to me. And I, I really need to talk to you. Okay, very good. Do you have his card? I do have his card, but I'd like to know when a good time. Okay. Thank okay. you. Um, as far as um, reiterating on the, the record question, um, at this point in time, are you are you neutral on this? Is this just like a study phase, or are you for or against it? Well. This is, this is a topic here. No, it's not going to be a dance, but it, it, it's a thing where personally I'm favorable to this. Uh, but you know, I'm elected by people in Lawrence County. And so this is one that is not really a moral or an ethical issue for me. If it were, I'd say this is where I stand, and this is the vote I'm going to take, and you knew where I stood before you elected me. But this is one where it doesn't appear to be in that category, so I think it's weird. I, I need to hear from what, from, from you well, guys, the one to elect me. I'm just saying that from, <laughs> yeah, I'm saying from, <laughs> he's got a fair point. I live, um, I live in Ozark, Missouri. Um, Lynn Morris is who represents my area. So I, I state that for the um, 
express purpose of either one saying, okay, Mike Moon's, Mike Moon's on this stance in Lawrence County, Ozark similar to Lawrence County on a lot of things, minus government overreach and a lot of things. So, uh, so is, uh, is Representative Morris on the state? Yeah, has it yet? He's right now neutral on it. Once the last time I had a chance to see this, he was in Colorado to see him servicing the operations. He did. Uh, when, when I asked his opinion directly, he said, I'm neither for or against it, I'm neutral on this because of the cost benefit ratios that can benefit job growth to individuals. And he said, as far as being against it, I'm against the impossible government overreach that could happen from this bill. That's the reason why I'm here. I'm wanting to, I'm wanting to actually, I actually was hoping I could get a copy of the bill because I've been able to meet up with one directly on it. Um, you can get it. Okay. okay. Go to house.mo.gov and um, if you run into the Snafford Hall and grab your book. House.mo.gov and then just house and build like 100. Mm -hmm. There's a, you'll see down the, uh, down the left hand side, bill tracking. You'll click on bill tracking and then you'll be able to open up a window that will allow you to put an HP 800. Okay. So, is there any other bills we should be aware of that are very, very important? Well, uh, there's lots, lots of bills. Some of that on just some road pricing. There's another one that uh, Eric, in fact, Eric Burleson is handling. It's the motorcycle helmet law. Mm. Well, what is that now? Okay. What, what is, is that, that now? There. So you say what is it? What is helmet law? Oh, it well, it's back. The warning. It was away now. Well, this it has been offered two or three different times. Okay. But currently, of course, you must wear a motorcycle helmet. On a moped, 49cc. Um, no. no currently, they're some exempt, but they just they just changed some of that. Where, um, well, I, I don't know for sure, but some of them you now you have to. But um, in um, it's this okay, legislature's okay. money because it's a city by city in Ozark. City by city. In, in Springfield, you have to have a helmet. In Ozark, it's a it's a gray area, but they enforce you have to wear a helmet, even though it's, huh? It is. It is. Yeah. I got a ticket. It has been. It is. Yeah. <laughs> so there are certain, yeah. uh, the, um, I think there are certain, uh, now that was a tag, so I, I believe the helmet law it is even on the scooters. That's correct. Oh, oh, it, unless yeah, it just got put on, it used to be 50 cc or less did not require a helmet. Uh, that may have changed this past year, I'm not sure. Um, this particular bill is to remove the laws themselves, from my yeah, understanding. According to the conversation I had with Joey Kyle, um, the 49 cc's um, stipulation still states um, that they can enforce it on a city by city basis. Right. And as a state, as a whole, they continue to enforce it. Um, I know because I got a, a friend gave me a motorcycle helmet for my 49 cc and it just looks stupid. Um, yeah, another question you'd know about that. Do you have to have a driver's license or motorcycle license to ride a 49 cc? This was one of his questions. I hate this. Absolutely well, hate this. A 49 cc um, by state law, you don't, but on a city by city basis in Springfield, you do, and it is enforceable in the Ozarks. In Ozark, you don't. So, why is it Ozark County? I don't know what ours is. We need to find out. Yeah. Yeah. Because he asked me this, and I want to make sure. Uh, my friend um, Neil Ecker works at the emergency management office. I could, the Lawrence could, County? Yeah, I could see. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. But, here, here's my thought, and I've had this thought for a long time. When I worked for Mercy Hospital, they were self-insured, and so that puts them in a little bit different category. But still, insurance is insurance. They they told us that if you're on our insurance plan and you're in an accident, and it's been determined that you're not you have, we're not wearing your seatbelt at the time of the accident, then your claim will be reduced by 50 percent. And I thought, man, that's kind of bad because. I, I wear my seatbelt most of the time, but there are some times I don't. And so... <laughs> they rarely, they rarely cut. And so... Mm. Well, Sorry, my... Uh, uh, 
<laughs> so, so in any case, I, again, it was like that decision with the uh, hydrocodone. I began going through, okay, what if, what if I'm in an accident, the cause or not? And I think, you know, I don't know that I financially could bear the burden pay the bills, and then my family would be adversely affected too. So I thought, okay, I'm going to wear my seatbelt. And, and so, why could not there be policies developed for individuals where they're wearing motorcycle helmets or seatbelts or whatever else to say that, um, you know, you don't wear your seatbelt, this is the cost of your policy, and here's your premium. And there you go. So it doesn't have to do it anymore. Anyway. Take the law yeah. off the books and just yeah. let, the, let the market dictate. Right. The state, I don't think, right. has, has, a, has really a standing on this, and I, I don't think. But, but here we are. It's like an SR-22. Yeah. And, and I have a, <laughs> just after we leave here, I'm going down to my insurance agent's office, and that's some of the questions that I have for him. Is why, if they have the ability, why has this not been done before? And could it be a new precedent that even Missouri begins to set? Well, they used to do it years ago. That was part of the policies. You tell me what you want and yeah. pay for it. Wow. But now everything is centralized where everybody yeah. gets the same policy, everybody gets the same everything, unless you can afford different. Now, here's something else. Maybe I shouldn't say this publicly. <laughs> 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 but, but, but here are questions that I have for it. And, you know, uh, the insurance follows the car. All right? Yeah. Yes. So why does each individual require insurance. Mm -hmm. If the car is insured, why should the individual be insured? And here's the one that really gets my good, and that is with the uninsured motorist too. Mm -hmm. I know, right? If, if, you're, if you're required to have insurance, and I'm involved in an accident, and I can't produce proof, then then I should pay the penalty because of the insurance. Right. That's but right. yet, because they don't... Um, Follow it monthly, because well, you know if they did, well, if they followed it monthly, they would know. Well, if, if I don't have insurance and I'm in a, an accident, there are some repercussions that are coming against me, but, you know, I don't have the money to pay. You don't get blood on the chart. That's or, right. Or, or, and so, very, very few. Exactly. And so, the court and they charge you 50 bucks. And so, what this appears to be is, I don't remember what the, the monthly fee is. It's just, you know, one or two dollars, I think, in the premium total. But this is a cash cow for insurance company. Yeah. I know. And so if it really is illegal, and, and here, I mean, this leads into something else. I've done this, this is really uh, kind of the full circle, I guess. But people argue the point that when you work your whole life, why should you spend the money that you've earned in your life for medical care or whatever it is? And when it comes back to this one, if, if, uh, if someone's uninsured, they say, well, you're, you're, you're going to be garnished this amount for however long it takes to pay it off. There will be people who always will say, that's my fault. Why should they have to pay the rest of their life? Mm -hmm. Well, because they didn't transfer the risk properly and they didn't maintain that. Because you can go get insurance and then the very day you can cancel it, you still got to as long as you got your insurance card and yeah. that can be your proof. Yeah, they've got to have some kind of monitor. Yeah. I, I agree with you. Because so people do that. For six they do that What's just that? to protect their car. It says you have insurance for six months. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Just a helmet is required here. Um, and it has to be insured um, 49 or and it, it's um, the clause. You have to be insured but no driver's license. <laughs> Taking the time to research this to look at the cost weight ratio, um, seeing the economical impact it could make, and everything. Um, I make I make a neutral argument because, um, and I kind of laughed when I was studying the history of our country and everything that the founding fathers actually regulated it to grow hemp with rope mm -hmm. and everything. It was a large commercial thing and and whatnot. But whenever Whenever we look into the actual weight of everything, um, the main concern is government. How big does it want to be in this situation, or how small will it allow themselves to be? Um, and with that, every single time, government only relies upon its ability to be greater. Is this a, another um, the rich get richer? Or 
there's a politics. <laughs> <laughs> well, I say it neutrally. Every bill that's ever been introduced has the possibility for a government entity to be um, Barney, um, Barney Fife or something. Every government wants to have their keys yeah. to to dangle around, and it's it's about the correct regulation to balance and do its own checks and balances that prohibit them from getting any greater control than what is given. Well, a lot of that too is should be driven from local communities, and unfortunately, uh, we don't have many people who are voicing their opinions, and, uh, and until that happens. Things will be driven from. I think it's level. bigger up no. in Springfield, isn't it? He goes to this meeting up in Springfield. Uh, Walker. Yeah. Well, the money that is funding them, their campaigns, the big, big pharma. That's the big reason why this is illegal. Mm -hmm. Big pharma doesn't want it illegal because it cures so many things. Yeah, maybe. The old lumber industry, you know, a lot of reasons. Mm -hmm. So they'll be able to, Petroleum. to be a dispensary because they can put that bond down there and have to do to get a license to do it. Yeah. It is. It's, there's so many reasons. Also, even the, um, the Hearst company it, uh, is the reason why hemp, one of the reasons why that became illegal, because Hearst owned uh, a bunch of land with, with trees, and the hemp came grow so quickly, yeah. and that was competing with him. So he could put his money behind making it illegal. Mm -hmm. That and big fun. Mm -hmm. So a scary thing with this is is Monsanto going to get involved in in the dispensaries and. The, Patenting of, of it, they haven't been able to yet because there's so many strains. But, yeah. but are they going to the GMO? Yep. Right. Probably right. <laughs> 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 have tomatoes on it. Do you see it being on the ballot next year? What's that? Do you see it being on the ballot next year? Well, I guess that's how it depends on the success. Yeah, there's two different things if anybody wants to sign. This is a full legal petition. You can read it. This is how it would change the Constitution. Um, and then there's another measure that has restrictions. This is the this is the one you'd like to sign. Yeah, I don't support uh, full. Then you're going to want then you're going to want it to look at petition 2016-009. That's the one. And that one does what? Um, that's the one that has you must be over age 21. You can only grow up to six plants. It will be taxed at 25 percent sales tax. Specific to that. Excise. So, so, so you'll have to claim that on the. Uh, well, okay. You won't, it won't be an assessed tax then. Right. Okay. Whereas, whereas I already see that um, uh, a representative has already introduced a bill saying medical marijuana is approved by the legislature that will be taxed at 8%. I think it's like Bill 9 or something. Uh -huh. No, this was something completely separate. Well, thank you all for coming oh, out. Thank you. For being for having me. Please uh, take a card with contact information on it if you don't have one and you want it. And uh, you're welcome to call me anytime. And if you want my cell number, I'll give you my cell number too. I want your cell number. I'll leave that out. <laughs> <laughs> I was just saying that. Yes. Uh, it took me two months to get my, one of my closest friends' numbers. Come on. 417-818-5419. Now is uh, Mr. Bonk still your aid up there? Well, uh, no, in fact, he um, took a pasture just right down the road. Oh, really? And um, so he, he stayed with me for one, one, one session. <laughs> <laughs> that will not be <laughs> you. <laughs> that would probably be the best one. Yeah, that would be a filibuster. Really long, 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 in fact, uh, yeah. you alluded to Dave Myers. That was from old film that's working with you now. Dave Myers? Yeah, I went to high school with Dave. Um, he, and I'll say this one, he doesn't give out his cell phone to me. Is uh, he an attorney? No. Um, Myers, I'll, I'll give you Dave Myers' cell phone if you want it. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, my God. Did you give him my number? No, Mike did. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just default to you. <laughs> yes, sir. I, I, I'm not your either, if you know. <laughs> but I find it fascinating that uh, listening to the comments here and, and, and talking about the local control and people are not taking this local control. And I just wonder.
than I stand. So if we were able to, for example, pass a balanced budget, and one that says you can't balance a budget by increasing spending, that would be in our pay for a benefit. $18 trillion, we're not going to pay it. But our children and grandparent, grandchildren, and maybe even their children, will probably be held by the debt. And whether that can be paid, I, I don't know, but some drastic changes need to be made there. <laughs> so those are just some of the things that we're, we think about. And even with the courts, and we only have the nine justices today, why couldn't each state nominate a justice and have them rotate terms? I mean, that's one of the things that's being thought of. Who knows if that would happen? But uh, that would allow for more representation across the nation. And, um, and, and hopefully accountability would be increased as well. But until we get the current Congress to realize that they are not following the Constitution, under, even under Article One, Section 8, that enumerates their power and authority, and they're, they're doing things outside that that should be doing, we're going to be trouble. And so this amending convention, even if there's not an amendment that is proposed and sent to the states for ratification, <coughs> We're already getting the attention of, uh, of some of our representation. Um, and I have a story to tell, but I better not tell it. So I'm going to do that. That's the on my tongue. I get that. This is Yeah, that, that's OK. This is in the, probably what we voted on next week. Maybe it's going to be including money. Now they've yeah. got a finance reform attached to that. No, yeah. That's no good. I talked to That's uh, no good. That really is the purpose of what you know. Yeah, well, it, since there has been no uh, current history of an amendment convention where the Congress actually approves one at this scope, there have been interstate conventions that have been held, and we're basing a lot of our uh, uh, we're, we're basing a lot of our rules making and putting the framework together on how a convention will be run based on some of those interstate uh, conventions that have been held in recent history. But there has to be 34 states that call for the convention. And we're, we're thinking that the Congress will require that each application, which is saying, may, may we have a convention, has to be worded precisely. Because there have been over 400 applications in the history of our country Made to the um, made to the Congress. In fact, 32, one of which Missouri is part. Back in 1978, I think it was, we applied for a convention for about the purpose of proposing a balanced budget amendment. Well, there are 32 states that have done that, but if you look at all their wording, they're not the same. So we're we're thinking that they're going to be so persnickety. That so they say, make it impossible. Well, here's the law. You yeah. can do this. Well, that's, you why you don't do want. that's why you don't want that uh, right. uh, uh, yeah. and financing then, campaign and on there. I get right. It takes a purpose. Yeah. Yeah. So right. Get it, and then the states mm -hmm. come together with the 34 that's votes right. to decide what they want, 30 of them pass it. And then, you know, that's right. Um, and so there's a one of our senators in Missouri, Jason Holzman, has been attending. In fact, we attended the first one at Mount Vernon. Um, two or three years ago, I think it was December of 2013. And then we've had two cents uh, as we start determining what a convention might look like when we started writing rules that we hope will be adopted when the convention is actually called. Well, Senator Holzman wants to have um, a uh, campaign finance reform as one of the amendments. Well, well, that's okay if that's what he wants, but instead of waiting for the convention, <laughs> We're, we're putting in a what we call a delegate limiting document that the state would have to, the state legislature would have to approve, the governor would have to sign off on it. He's wanting to put it in the language for the application. And so that changes what we've got. Uh, three other states have done, and 19 others, I believe, have actually made uh, proposals in the state legislatures. Then that would discount. I mean, we, we think they would be so different that if the Congress would get it, they wouldn't include that. In the 34 calls. And so um, I talked with Senator Wayne Wallace for this morning. And he's the one who's got the amendment proposal. 
And uh, when we spoke about it, he said, well, you know, if, if this is going to kill it, like we talked about, then he won't even offer it. So I well, why couldn't they get 32 representatives from each state that were interested in doing this to write the bill together? Well, you know? Well, you, you, have, to, you have to get them together first. Right. But I'll tell you that would be a solution to, other than writing all different ones. I'll, I'll tell you what. The vast majority well, of them are attorneys. They can't agree on the meaning of a single word. Once you want to Oh, come on. Yeah. What, he said, what he said has merit. We had 100, about 101 people in Virginia's meeting. And uh, 30, 31 states, I believe, were represented. 31. <laughs> 31 Minus states. the one. Yeah. Well, no, we need 34. Oh. But okay. the 31 states were there. Okay. And by the end of that meeting, I, I, it was really funny. That I realized then that states don't get together very well. <laughs> and that, and that, can, that can be a good thing. Because we don't want, we don't want some states getting together and saying, okay, Second Amendment. And so it's really that easy. Kind of funny. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. will be a long, hard process. Yeah. But I came away from that meeting thinking, if we get this done, it's going to be a miracle. Yeah. And so what you said about getting 32 people or 34 as you need from the states to get together to do that, it's, that's in process, but it's not working exactly like that model. Mike Ferris, Bob Meckler, who was co founder of the uh, Tea Party Patriots. Sure. He, he's in it, and Senator Con, Con Cobra now, he said that's his lifelong mission now, to, to see that an article by dimension is, is actually held. But uh, Mike Ferris and some others, then Bernard and Nathanson, have written the language, and it's pretty specific. And so some other, some other um, states have proposed some language, but now they're seeing that the aggregation is important, and so we have more coming on board. We could have as many as 25 states this wow. year wow. Um, if we get it out of the legislature. And what is it when, like, Oklahoma and Arizona, they said they're going to become their own states? That's not the same thing, right? No, that would be secession. Okay, then what yeah. is that? That's where you I mean, that would bring away war. Yeah, that's, that's what <laughs> happened in the Civil War, <laughs> where the North and the South split. And uh, you know, some people have said, well, why does not Missouri secede? I said, well, yeah, that's a good idea, but I can't consider this. We're landlocked. Unless Oklahoma, or maybe Arkansas, and Texas, and maybe even Alabama say, we're with you, and we'll provide provisions from the port, where are we going to get our food? You know, I thought about that, because it's like if you do that, then it's like no one's going to work with you, because they're not making any money off it. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like the legislature too. You got to have people advocating with you and right. for you, or you right. sign the words. So that's one that probably would. Nullification, though, on the other hand, is something that we did last year, and hopefully we'll continue to do on a larger scale. Yes, sir. So what's the sole purpose of what are you guys trying to do with the best Island? Well, we, we have some amendments that we like to propose. One is about the balanced budget. Another one is similar to the court's provision where we could. Um, Propose an amendment that would say that each state has the ability to nominate one Supreme Court justice, and then I don't know all the mechanics of it, but it would be similar to where they have nine on the court at one time, but they would rotate um, in various terms. And, um, and then perhaps even term limits for the, the court and the Congress. Uh, is it going to affect any of the medical marijuana? No, that, that's a state issue. I, I don't think that, and this is my personal opinion, um, there are some things that the federal government should do. For example, the, the Commerce Clause deals with, if you look at the original interpretation of, of uh, Commerce, it was, um, uh, kind of shipping. That, that was what they were looking at. So things went from state to state, so that there would be fairness between the states. And one would say, okay, we're going to charge you an import tax or a uh, duty from crossing our state lines. Our state would be in shambles for that. So the federal government needed to make sure that state-to-state uh, -state transactions were fair and equal so that everybody was on the same field there. But today, what have they done? They stretched that to include manufacturing and uh, Production of raw materials, you know, every process through there, retail, 
that's, that's not commerce. That's not the shipping that was originally intended. So that's one that we want to, uh, to, uh, to change there. And that wasn't your question. But you said something. Else, right? Okay. He just yeah. wanted to know okay. if this had to do with yeah. that. Yeah. Those things like um, general welfare, not individual welfare, is, is a federal thing. So roads, bridges, infrastructure, those are things that the federal government should do. But for medical marijuana or otherwise, it should be a state issue. And that's a good thing. I thank goodness you're here today. So I've, I've got an education today. Well, I'm thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes. How much your bill that's still there? Yes. The cannabis being a tax one for the federal level. How is that? It won't. Except if, if, if this were contrary or conflict with the federal law, then the state legislature will have to make a decision. Do we succumb to federal authority, or do we exercise the Tenth Amendment and say that there is no provision in the Constitution that gives them the ability to... Because they have any the rules, right? Well... Or any laws, federal laws. It's not their it's federal it's, drug. Federally, it's, it's a class one controlled yeah. substance, which is in the same category as heroin, and one of the specifications uh, of that is that it has absolutely no medicinal quality, which I think science has obviously that's not true. So why is that still a class one substance? But this is where the states and the federal law is completely contracted. So my question is, yeah, so that's not a thing. So technically, the feds, yeah, the feds. Yeah. Um, there's a question I have. Where are you from? Uh, Neosho, Truck City, Missouri. You know where that, that's a long way. No. Neosho? Uh, are you a representative? No. But he should be. Okay. Yes. He's a citizen. He a citizen. Be. Be. Good service. Mm -hmm. And who are you? Mark Spring. Mark Spring. Mark Spring. Mark Spring. Mark Spring. Mark Spring. East New School District. Is that you know? I'm from California. Okay. In those sports, I thought maybe that. <laughs> and, and I should say that his school board, which you were the president at the time, are you still? No, they, they didn't like what I had to say. Uh, <laughs> if, if, you, if you know much about Common Core, <laughs> does anybody know about Common Core? Oh, yeah. I know it's confusing. I'm actually going up to Jeff City yes. next week with Mary. Mr. Franklin, what's not your district, the only district to. East Newton was the. To adopt a resolution against coming to Oh, wow. Well, he missed yeah. it. Good job. He and Emory made a real comment on that, and I really appreciate it. He said, What, what better school than the Patriots? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I remember that. So I admire him and all they did for that. Mm -hmm. They were the only ones willing to So you used to have phonics. Mary Byrne. You still have phonics and all that in education? Uh, Old school. Education. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good. I'm a little hard here. That's okay. Mary. That's good. Mary Byrne and I are going up to Jefferson City next week. Um, when she spoke at the Conservative America's Club, which I encourage every one of you guys to research that, um, the the core the core um, belief behind the Conservative America's Club is principles before politics. And I am the page administrator, and we post a lot of the stuff up there. Um, but Mary actually cited that statement, and I loved her reaction. She's like, when I, when I heard that, this holy indignation of intense flaming fire just consumed me, and I had to make a statement. Wow. She's from Pennsylvania. She studied this stuff far before it came to Missouri. Um, but the legislature that's behind this has been around for decades. Really? While I was in school. You guys heard of No Child Left Behind? Yeah. Yeah, every child was left behind. I agree. Yeah, me included. <laughs> yeah, in the um, children in the foster care system got hurt the worst by that. Uh, well, any, anything else uh, that you'd like me to take back? <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, but again, I'm glad you, you came out. And, thank uh, you for taking your oh, time. Oh, thank you. I appreciate well, it. You know, we've done far too few of these, and I hope to do more. And if, if, if you have something in Maryville that's going on, you want to set something up, let me know. I'll be there. I'll be there. You might convert me to be a Republican. <laughs> Why? Wait. I don't have a card. <laughs> You're, I just go to wherever I want to. No Mary Kay Tupperware? <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> Wait, Mary Kay Tupperware? Mary Kay Tupperware? Oh, dear. My sister convinced me to do yeah, it. Tea party? <laughs> yeah. I thought you were talking about Amway, Mike. <laughs> <laughs>